film, a few guys from the Capriotas Club are heading to Exmoor to hunt the region's giant red stags. And we also take a closer look at some of the equipment that they're using to hunt the UK's largest wild land mammal. Good to see you again, mate. Oh, yeah. You all right? Yeah, all good. So, uh, a little bit different from the Lee Enfield in Roebuck, isn't it, today? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty hardcore today. We're going for the uh, for rutting red stags. And we're uh, down on your ground. Yeah. Giants of Exmoor, I think they call yeah, them. They, they come they? down off the moor, up, up and down the X Valley. Um, you know, I've, I've shot from this car park four times. That's, how, that's right how close and thick we are with them. So, uh, hopefully, the boys will, will come up trumps. Good. See how we get on. When you got a minute, Michael, I don't want to distract you, but uh, what are you using today? Well, I know what you're using. I'm shooting the 300 Win Mac and the Blazer R8. It's a cannon. Slick bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah. And the uh, Suaro DS scope as well. Nice piece of kit. Yeah. For Three. some very big animals. Yeah. I expect we're going to see some very large stacks today. Great, great yeah, caliber for big loaded reds, isn't it? Exactly. Fingers crossed for some luck. A little punchy, gets the job done. So, Murray, what are you using today? Uh, Blazer R8, 308. Nice combination, that is classic. It works well. Classic combination. I think so. And uh, Scroll Speed Z8i. I was just about to say what the optics, but yeah. uh, and a Harkila cap. There you go, all new. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of branding, is it? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, we'll see how we get on. Fingers crossed, we'll have some luck. Thank you. So Charlie, what are you using today? 308 Sauer 404. Should get the job done. The this German is, engineering. This is the same rifle we had in the uh, Highlands last yeah. year, wasn't it? Hit a few more animals since then with it. So. Reds again, Charlie, but uh, this time slightly bigger reds than in Scotland, I think. Fingers crossed at least, Peter. No more no switchy bastards around here. <laughs> And I'm using Swarovski's new TM35 Thermal. With Paul having caught some footage of these rutting beasts on his trail cam, we're hopeful of some luck as we venture into the woods. woods in this part of the countryside are in the words of Robert Frost, lovely, dark and deep. And after a trek through the forestry, Mike and I arrive at a felled area. It's a beautiful forest. It's um, do you know what made me think of? Made me think of Norway. Yeah. Especially when we were walking in back there. Yeah. The deep, yeah. The tundra. Big country, isn't it? Makes me think of that Robert Frost poem. Yeah, the lovely. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But <laughs> I have miles to go and promises to keep. Regrettably, however, as evening turns to night, nothing breaks cover. The next morning, I'm with Charlie. It's a balmy 16 degrees at just 6 a.m. and this seems to be suppressing activity. But nonetheless, we settle in in anticipation. It's not the giant that we're hoping for, 
but it's a perfect coal stack that eventually breaks cover. Big beasts, these uh, reds, Charlie, aren't they? That is. I'll leave you to drag it back, Peter, yeah. and I'll see you at the hotel, Charlie. <laughs> and uh, good neck shot there. Tricky to do it, which is quartering on, wasn't she? Yeah. Wasn't he, rather, rather? But no, no, it certainly didn't go anywhere. 308 does the job. Charlie, great shot. Nice little spiker there. Well done. Well, yeah, came out the last minute. We were able to get a deer down, which is always a uh, always a relief. Yeah, no, brilliant. And uh, presented you with a slightly challenging shot, didn't it? Actually, no, it wasn't a textbook shot, but it was always coming straight on at us. So we uh, ended up deciding that we need to take action before it runs and took a low neck shot. And I'm hoping when we get up to it, we're going to find out it's come out just behind the offside shoulder. I, I think you're right, crossed. actually. No, I think you're right. I think you've done very well there, actually, because the shot looks to be, as you say, kind of low neck. And, uh, yeah. yeah, slightly tricky. Otherwise, that bullet's going to come straight down all that yeah. cavity, well, it, isn't it? Well, it's dropped on the spot and it hasn't gone anywhere and it's dead as a doornail. We can tell that from here. So it's... Uh, that's the main thing, it was a humane shot. Yeah, well done Charlie, and uh, nice to get a little bit of action just at the end there. We are exactly. just, just about to give up, weren't we? Exactly, that, that full English breakfast was calling from the <laughs> hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's frightening, isn't it? Because it, Well, it's a shame, because it was otherwise quite a quiet sort of a, a trip, apart from that. There are loads of signs of the Reds, it but, is, though, but very mild today, that's wasn't it? Peter. If it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. So you've got, to, you've got to take the quiet with the action. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, congratulations once again, and, uh, and, and well done done. Oh, cheers. So Paul, so Paul, good to see you. You too, mate. Good and, to see uh, you. Yeah. Thanks. Viewers will excuse us, I hope. I've got bloody hands. We all look a bit sweaty, don't we? Because we've been uh, dragging out a uh, red spiker down here, yeah. haven't we? So uh, take a bit of extracting, don't they? Yeah, they're uh, quite a heavy beast. Yeah. And especially when the ground's like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but listen, I I did want to take a moment just to have a little look at the calibre of choice that Paul uses. Um, these big reds, they take a bit of putting down. So whenever you're shooting large lowland reds, the bigger calibres are, are, are going to be much more preferable. Sort of 6.5 Creed, more 270s, 30 or 6, 308, and that type of calibre is brilliant. But Paul, you've got something a bit different, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a bit, a bit rogue, um, uh, 6.5 by uh, PRC, yeah. which is uh, very hard hitting, same 6.5 calibre bullet. Um, Flies about 3,200 feet per second out my barrel. It's really hard, um, and the drop is is nothing at yeah. about 200 yards an hour. Is it a magnum? Yeah, it's magnum. So everything's uprated. Uh, uprated scope, rings, barrel, moderator. Um, there's a Wildcat 12. Yeah. Um, obviously standard sort of Wildcat 8, 243s, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, and with a, with a upgraded um, magnum caliber comes yeah. upgraded price of everything as well. So, so you rate that to caliber though? I mean that's, yeah. that's what you think, yeah, that's I, where it's at? I, I, no, no reds in here have, have, have ever run. How They've, many how many foot pounds do you say? Uh, it's not off my no. head, we're talking a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know the, the impact energy just puts them straight down. Yeah. Um, and you know if if you're chest shooting here, yeah. um, they, they drop straight away, which is great. Oh, so, uh, great to see you. Thanks a lot. Thanks Cheers. Very much. Harvesting these enormous beasts results in some fabulous, wild, sustainable meat. But just how much venison do you get from a stag like this? Okay, Peter, this is that red deer that Charlie shot. Fillet steaks. Roasts. Rump roast. Bone in shoulder joint for making osabuco. Tied neck joint. Rump steaks. 
neck fillets, silver, uh, sorry, salmon steaks, tenderloins, more rump steaks, slow roasting, sorry, slow cooking um, shanks. These are interesting. These are the flanks that have been seasoned and tied. Stewing steak, mince for onward uh, processing or lasagnas, etc. In our next film, due out just before Christmas, quantity and sightings for our Capriolas Club members are no issue. We endorse it where reducing deer damage to the environment is a top priority, and seven rifles harvest no fewer than 21 seeker in just two short outings. <laughs>